Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. <clears throat> Today we are going to see the results of the new bone densitometry and compare with the previous 18 months period. And next <clears throat> we'll see my food diary program the calcium and vitamin D intake and that these results were obtained with. But first I'd like to take a look at the theories about osteoporosis and more specifically the calcium paradox. The notion of calcium paradox refers to the theory that says we must consume a lot of calcium, preferably dairy products, to make strong bones, dairy products or otherwise calcium supplements. <clears throat> but many recent uh, studies show that it's precisely those populations here in the West, in the Western world, that consume the most dairy products, that also get the most fractures. So this theory is more and more abundant in favor of the theory of acid alkaline balance, which advocates that an alkaline diet is the only way to rebuild the bone together with physical exercise. <clears throat> Thus, Amy Lanou, Amy Joy Lanou, Building Bone Vitality, and also Susan ba uh, Brown, the director of the Center for Better Bones. <clears throat> You'll find all the infos and references below uh, this video. See the cause of osteoporosis in our acid diet, mainly in dairy and meat protein and processed foods. The reason is that, com that complete proteins increase the acidity of the blood and this is uh, for the body unbearable. So it's the beginning of the bone weakening because to compensate for this acidity, the body must draw calcium from its stock, and that is from the bone. And for one gram of protein, it eliminates one to one and a half milligram calcium through urine. The loss can add up to a good deal of the skeleton over time. So, <clears throat> this raises several questions. Uh, for instance, how much calcium is needed? How much vitamin D is needed? And to try to find out, it's often necessary to do blood work or urine tests. But it's good to keep in mind the following. Because if I'd known this knowledge earlier, my results would have been much better now. <clears throat> so first, we know that calcium intake elsewhere in the world <clears throat> often does not exceed 500 milligrams, and yet there is no epidemic of osteoporosis nor fractures. And the most amazing concrete example I am aware of in this regard it's a video of a more than 90 years old woman who says that her osteoporosis has almost healed over a period of 10 years while she was on a plant-based diet and eating no other calcium than the calcium contained in her diet. She was already more than 80 years old when she started this diet. Uh, you'll find the link to the video below. It's in Italian, but there are subtitles. Second point to keep in mind, we know that too much calcium can wreak havoc and that an excess of calcium is difficult to eliminate. Just think of osteoarthritis in the fingers. And next is the mechanism of the assimilation of calcium in the body. This mechanism relates to vitamin D. It's explained in detail by Colin Campbell in his book The China Study. Vitamin D, which is more a hormone than a nutrient, 
is stored in the liver. <clears throat> but it's not enough to have a vitamin D stuck in the liver. Uh, the vitamin D must still arrive at the places that need it. And this is done through a complex process. The main component of which is an active form of vitamin D. The kidneys and the thyroid uh, work together to produce this active form. So this active vitamin D is much more powerful <coughs> and much more important not only for calcium metabolism and osteoporosis, but also for many uh, other diseases. It seems it plays a beneficial role in many diseases. <clears throat> so it's best to have good levels in the blood, as low levels can increase the risk of disease. Well, and these levels go down in the presence of too much calcium, and or too much protein. So to summarize, a plant-based alkaline diet provides uh, quite enough calcium, uh, mostly um, 500 milligram at most um, supplements should be enough. But vitamin D needs to be supplemented much more. And we left with the question how much vitamin D supplements then? And there seemed to be no unanimity. Amy Lanou and Michael Grieger recommend 2,000 units here in his book. Susan Brown, uh, 4,000 to 6,000 units. She herself takes 5,000 during the summer and 6,000 during the winter. She says that what matters is the level of vitamin D in the blood. Ideally, uh, there should be 50 to 60 microgram. And well, some people will reach it with 2,000 units, others with 3,000 or 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 units. In short, it may vary from person to person, may depend on the health or on the corpulence of a person. Uh, you'll find uh, the link to the video of Susan Brown below. <clears throat> then a last thing to note, Colin Campbell notes that beyond a certain level, it may become toxic. Also, the body could lose its ability to assimilate it properly. So best is to be somewhat prudent because when there is too little, you can always add, but when there is too much, it's much more delicate. Neither excess calcium nor excess vitamin D is easy to eliminate. It can take many months, again, as we've seen with osteoarthritis in the finger. Well, I invite you now to discover the food diary and the details of the calcium and vitamin D intake, the levels of vitamin D and the effects on the densitometries. Here are the results of the new densitometry of 8 October 2019. There is a new improvement on the level of the lumbar, 84%. Previously it was 83% and there is a decrease of density on the level of the left hip, 71%, previously it was 75%. So this is a consequence of me reducing both calcium and vitamin D intake. Let's now take a look at the food intake. This is my food diary program. This is the interface that lets me record everything I eat and this is the interface that lets me do requests. We'll take a look at the three periods because they all have some interesting aspects. I start with the previous uh, period and I do a request from 1 to, to October 2016 to 15 
April 2018. As you can see, this is the summary with all the nutrients except from vitamin D, as there are not many foods containing vitamin D. And we see for calcium, 543,121 milligrams of calcium. If we divide by 545 days for the 18 months, this gives an average of 996 milligrams of calcium a day, let's say 1000 milligram. We now take a look at the big items in the list, uh, in the detailed list with calcium containing foods consumed. My aim is simply to show the calcium comes only from the foods. Uh, mostly they were soy products, plant based milks, oat straw, and nettle infusions. So I'll show just the big items. There was still a bit of cheese. Here we have a first big item. Soy milk. Um, tofu. This is cocoa milk. Uh, oat straw. Oat straw infusion. Uh, this is another cocoa milk. This is nettle infusion. And this is another soy milk. And so this gives the total that we saw. Um, Actually, if I follow my instincts, I most often reach an average of about six or seven hundred milligrams of calcium a day. So the infusions are actually not neglectable. So as for vitamin D, I took 31 amples during this period. Uh, so this is 31 multiplied by 25,000, that, that is 775,000 units, divided by 545 days, this gives me 1,422 units of vitamin D on average per day. Let's now see the level of vitamin D in the blood during 2018 and 2019 is here. We see in 2018-33. This is much less than the ideal recommended level of 50 micrograms. So I can conclude that the results would have been better if I had taken the ideal amount of 2000 units of vitamin D. And yet, I've continued to take less during the next period. We're now going to take a look at the new period. I do a new request from 16 April. October 2019 Calcium is now 361,307 milligrams divided by 545 days, that is 662 milligrams of calcium on average a day. As for vitamin D, I took 21 amples. 21 multiplied by 25,000, that is 525,000 units, 
divided by 545 days that is only 963 units on average a day. Let's now see the level of vitamin D in the blood. 2019 we have 27. This is too low because the required minimum is 30. So this explains the less good results of the densitometry. Uh, but the conclusion that I draw is that an alkaline diet without considerable vitamin D supplements is not enough to reverse osteopenia and osteoporosis. We now take a look at the very first period of 2015-2016. It's interesting for two reasons. I still ate meat. Not, not much dairy anymore, but during 2016 I still ate meat. And second, I took lots of vitamin D. Why? Because of my eczema. Remember in video 7, which was a special winter session, I spoke to you about my eczema. Let's see the levels in the blood work. Uh, we have here 2016, 2015. We have 51 and 52. That is the ideal level. Uh, we are going to take a look at the calcium intake now first. Mm. For this 11 months period, 11, five, uh, 13 months period, 2015 to 9, 6, 2016, 13 months. And we have now 241,224 divided by 395 days for the 13 months. This gives me 610 milligrams uh, per day on average. As for vitamin D, I took 32 ampoules and that is a total of 32 multiplied by 25,000. Uh, this gives 800,000 units divided by 395 days. That is 2,025 units per day on average. So this period teaches two things. I obtain the ideal level of 50 micrograms by taking about 2,000 units on average a day of vitamin D. And second, looks like these 2,021 units were not enough in the presence of meat to stop or prevent osteopenia. With the next encytometry we'll see, we will give the combination of high vitamin D intake and uh, with dietary calcium, always without supplements in any case, and lots of physical special osteoporosis exercises. I'll do the next encytometry in one year. And depending on the results, I see what will have to be done with calcium. For now, I try to avoid too high calcium intake, I mean with supplements, and rely on my instinct. Well, that's it for today. I hope this info can be useful for you. In the book of Amy Lanou, you'll find a lot of info about the way you can alkalinize your meals. Uh, there are lists of alkaline and acid foods recipes and really all you need to adapt your diet successfully. 
Thank you so much for watching. Next video will be next year. So I wish you all a peaceful end of year period. Bye bye.